what up YouTubers, it's your boy the car tactician and welcome to another episode of, uh, I don't know what I'm going to call this, I, every time I have these videos I always say that and I, like, I totally forget like the title of the channel and shit, I know it's about like Greykeeper Tech and shit like that and whatever, uh, moving on. Um, this video is going to be a two-parter. The first part is going to just talk about the, the, the top decks that are in the meta, Tier 1 and Tier 0. And um, the second part is going to be a card that people are talking about running in the side or even in the main deck. Um, and I'm going to talk about why it's good to test out for this meta and specifically why it's very good um, to play in the Greykeeper deck as a main deck card um, to experiment with. Alright, so the first deck that I'm going to talk about, um, Spellbook of Prophecy. Um, you know these guys, when Judgment comes out, um, it's going to make the deck faster and more gayer. Um, side decks and tech cards that you can play against this shit would be Droll and Lockbird. That's what people are talking about. I'm lucky I got them, like, literally a year or so ago because I knew the card was going to be good. There's a reason why they made it a rare. Um, I bought my playset and I put them away. And now the card is, like, 9 to $10 on um, cool stuff or CoreTCG.com. If you can find it cheaper, go ahead. But um, good luck to you with that. Um, next deck. Tier 0, the Elemental Dragons. This deck is very gay because um, unlike the uh, the Mermail deck and the uh, Dark World deck, it literally has no weakness to remove from play because generally decks like this, you would probably play two uh, Bombers Trapples, um, Dimensional Prisons, uh, what else is there? Uh, Macrocosmos and Soul Drains and stuff like that. But this deck gets effects as it triggers once it's moved from play in other in other effects too, so it's kinda gay. Um there's a reason why they've made the drain cards. Um now we have Soul Drain and they're coming out with Mind Drain, which basically says you cannot um effects that would activate in the hand cannot activate. So basically it stops these their effects. Um more specifically this guy, he's like the out to a lot of problems. Um whenever they play Evil Swarm Orpheon, um he's basically out. He says uh goodbye, pop that guy and I don't want to see you ever again. Um He's a pretty good monster. Um, so the Soul Drain cards, whenever you get a chance, pick those up. I got again. I got a play set of Soul Drain. Um, I'm waiting for Mind Drain. Once that comes, I'm gonna play uh, pick up a play set of those. Um, Mermail Abyss and Dark Worlds. I pretty much think of them as the same deck. It's just Mermails are basically uh, Dark World Advanced. They're just a bit faster. They have more destruction effects and they're more ver a little bit more versatile. Dark World does have its advantages. Um, in terms of X Y. Well, I don't want to say X Y Z because nothing really beats. Um mermailing and xyz summoning into big eye big eye is like the biggest shit now before the motherfucker was like a dollar a dollar fifty two dollars no one ever used them i wish i picked them up when he was like super cheap now the guy's pushing for like 70 fucking dollars because of decks like this shit and these guys too um so you know these guys they're basically the the side deck that you would use against them is again the macrocosmos soul drain um and d fissure um the new kid on the block brotherhood of the fire fist um, these guys are basically the new age gladiator beast. Um, they are just gay. They're basically like gladiator beasts with a mix of, of great keepers in it because great keepers, the archetype, the whole great keeper descendant after descendant came out, every other deck that came out had a monster that was like him. Um, when the new six samurais came out, they had six, uh, hand of six samurai. Um, she was basically just like, uh, she was basically just like Descendant. And then every archetype that came out after that, um, the, the creators must have said, you know, we need to put a, a monster like Great Keeper Descendant in their deck to give them the option to blow shit up. So, uh, I, that is basically what they are. So, these guys, um, you have Bri uh, Fire Fist Bear, Fire Fist Gorilla, um, Fire Fist Dragon, which are the main three that they use, and then they just use other monsters in the deck. Um, I've been seeing some tech online where people are using Cat Ears Tribe. Yes, I know it's funny. It's an old school card, but when you see Cat Ears Tribe on the field and you have Tensu and a Tanky straight up, and he's 400 attack, and whatever he comp fights with, that monster goes to 200. So he was always be 200 attack bigger than it. Um, that motherfucker's dangerous. Um, tr look that up. Um, Rescue Rabbit. You know what he is. You know what he does. He's basically the uh one of the top tier decks. In the format now, he's pretty easy to use, and he counters basically the gayer decks, which is one, two, and possibly three with its control element. Don't need to talk about that. Wind ups have been falling off. Um, I haven't been seeing a lot of them. Yes, they've been topping. They pretty much top every YCS they go to, as well as they either win or they just top. Um, nothing big there. Nothing new. You know what to do to fight them. Six Samurai has been getting a lot of talk because of the fact that on the ban list they released the uh smoke signal so you can have three now um i don't know why you would run like seven searchers and it's kind of like um 
how much space do you have in a deck for searchers and other cards? Because every time I play the deck, I never get that setup that other people get. I guess it's because my rank is not that high on DN or other uh, gaming stations. But it's so funny. I'm playing someone and their rank is like 100 and whatever. And then they drop. They they get the whole setup with us, with um Dojo and everything. And it's like, what the fuck? How come I can't get this shit? Um... But yeah, he's it's the bit it's the the newest deck people are playing. Strangely enough, whenever I play this deck and whenever I see people play it, whenever you're seeing the the the, the nastier decks, which is either Fire Fist, um, Dark Worlds, or Burn Mills, or whatever, Six Sunrise gets beat the fuck up. Like I'm dead serious. Like it's whenever you're playing something that's not like tier one or tier zero, like let's say tier one point five or something like that, you'll beat the fuck up out of everything but when it comes to these motherfuckers like it's the lowest it's the the worst deck to play in the format now um now part two to the video i'm going to talk be talking about a card that people have been talking about online and i think it's a good idea to test out um because it messes up some of the decks up there and it gives you actually options to do other things if you if you know what i'm talking about um now outside of great keepers in general right this card messes up a lot of things in the middle. Tech, well, not a lot, but it gives you options on how to fight things. Because a lot of people are like, well, um, the biggest deck that this will stop as, in terms of if you put this in your side deck is these guys. Because a lot of people are going to be playing this deck. Like, I, I guarantee you a lot of people are going to be playing one, two, three, and four. Mainly those four decks. Then under that, you're going to see one two and possibly three and possibly four like roughly those are the ones that people are gonna are, are hardly gonna be playing so these are decks one two three four one two three four and then the others these are the other lower tier decks that people might might start playing um all right now this card stops these guys um it will it will stop rabbit if played correctly and if you go first per se um if you call something and say i call like i don't know uh dragons or let's say uh uh what 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 type like let's say spellcasters or something it'll stop rabbit from going into laggy and then they'll be forced to go into something else like oh fuck the whole point of the deck is to go into laggy so now they have to wait until they get that mst and pop that and then they can go into laggy and all that shit um it doesn't do anything against that it doesn't do anything against that um it doesn't do anything against that or that or that <clears throat> so it's like a one card tech against two decks and that's pretty much it um, now, in regards to Grey Keepers, I think this is a good card to put in the main deck, not the extra deck. Why? Because, as we all know, Grey Keeper players, and I talk about this on another video, Grey Keeper players tend to not utilize the extra deck at all. Like, they'll get the XYZ monsters, they'll put them in there, but they think of it as, oh, the Grey Keeper deck can run by itself. I'm just going to get these just in case, but not to really abuse the extra deck. Like, yo, there's a lot of monsters that you could run. And your extra deck that'll make your great keeper deck better. Like if you actively incorporate your extra deck into your strategy, um, the you'll win a lot more. It'll give you more control. It'll give you more advantages, etc., etc. Um, as far as great keeper is concerned, I think this card is great because, um, when you learn how to abuse spy with stealth and the constant flipping up and uh, back and forth with the card, this card gives you the option to go into Doka and Lagia. I'm telling you, running three Lagia and two Doka in the extra deck, in regards to all the other extra deck monsters that you could run, your XYZ monsters, makes Great Keeper, it gives Great Keepers another dimension of control. I'm telling you, test it out. Make it Dino Keepers. Um, yo, it's so good. Turn the motherfuckers into drag. Turn the motherfuckers into dinosaurs. Say, you know, oh, dinosaurs going to, to Lagia. Now you have a walking solemn judgment that's 2400 attack on the field. I can't tell you enough. I've been testing this card out in the main deck. First, I played two of them, and I said, yo, two is not enough. I put three, and it's like, oh, shit. I'm summoning two to three Lagia or Dokas onto the field per game, and my opponent's like, yo, I can't deal with this shit. I know, I know, I know. It's super gay. Um, plus, you have to deal with shit like Shockmaster. Um, I play Stardust. Dra I two play two Stardust Dragons in my extra deck um, because I play Stardust Road. This card, test it out. It's really good. It's the hottest shit, and a lot of people are t talking about it. Um, I think it's a disservice to think only that it can fuck with that and that. Um, if you're just talking about in general, and if you're a great keeper player, to just think about it as an extra deck. No, this deck card will change completely how you play the great keeper deck by giving you access to Doka and Lagia onto the field. Um, it changes everything and it gives you more control, more power on the field. 
Alright everyone, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Take care. Comment, rate, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Peace.